Hey guys, Kilimanjaro all the week. Today we're gonna be doing a review of my G&G M1 Garand. I don't mind my dog over here. We just got her a couple months ago. She's like 16. We've been looking after her. I don't know what she's doing right now. So as you can see, there she is, the doggy. And I got a tripod. I got three attachments for it. Uh, one of them is a smartphone mount. The other is for a regular camera and a GoPro, I just literally got this in today, right here from Walmart. 20 bucks, I like it so far. It's just gonna help me out with filming big time. Just adjust you right there. So, what we came here for is a review on the M1 Garand. By far the best M1 Garand I've had. I haven't field tested it or anything like it yet. Um, I post pictures of the box and all the contents it came with. Very well built rifle. The only little complaint, which really isn't that big of a deal, is I got this little blemish right here from when it was shipped. I got this in last year from Evike, paid $450 for it, um, plus shipping, which is like $60, I think. So I paid just about $500 for the rifle. It's very well constructed. It's by a long shot passes the ICS and ANK M1s that I've had in the past. Uh, the ICS being my first one ever. Um, everything about it is well built. I mean, there's no creaking, rattling, anything of that nature on this rifle whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> it's supposed to shoot around 410 FPS. I'm not too sure. That's the point twos, but this by far is the best airsoft M1 Garand I've had, period. Um, I'll just make it short and simple because I'm actually baking something over there. I don't want the house to burn. Uh, let's walk you through the rifle real fast. So. Um, the receiver on top here, I'm not sure if that's what it's called on the real M1. This is all metal. I'm not sure what metal constructed it's constructed of. I want to assume it is very high quality aluminum, if not something very close to steel and it's parkerized. Uh, the stock is made of wood, real wood. Um, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is exactly. It's pretty heavy and it doesn't creak or anything like that. The finish on it is beautiful. You can see all like the uh, the texture in the wood and whatnot. Um, butt plate's metal. It's parkerized as well as with the rest of the rifle. And this is where your battery goes. So just like in my AMK, you can stick like a 9.6, I mean an 11.1 stick or something like that. 7.4 LiPo in here. And you're ready to rock and roll. It's got a mini Tamiya connector. You can switch it out to Dean's if you want. It's got the uh, trigger guard, which is parkerized. It's the correct. World War II M1 tr style trigger guard. The ICS one had the M14 trigger guard, which is wrong. Uh, metal trigger, of course. It's your mag release. Now out comes your magazine. I think it holds around 20 BBs, 20 round capacity. You gotta make sure it sits in real well. This little tap goes right in. Even that's parkerized, how's that? Your bolt does not lock back as far I, as I know. But that's also parkerized and inside your hop-up drum style, like a G3. We all know how that works and all the trademarks are beautifully engraved into the rifle, very uh, closer to the real M1. Um, got the ribs right here on the, M you know, from the real M1. They're also parkerized. Front sling mount, rear sling mount. The Hand guard, if you want to call it that, right here. I forgot what this piece is called. Fore guard or hand guard. That's also made of wood. This is a part on the ICS which really bothered me. Um, I've had to shove tape in there a couple of times to get it to stop bothering. But on the GMG, I mean, you can see I'm picking it up by this fore guard and it's not moving at all. Gas tubes metal. It functions when you pull the bolt back, just like the real M1. That's also parkerized steel, I want to assume, or aluminum. If I had a magnet, I'd be able to show you that. Uh, barrel, outer barrel, the rest of the gas tube and the front sight are also made of parkerized. I mean, uh, they're also made of steel, or I think, yeah, I think they're, they're made of steel. It's all parkerized though. Front sight's metal, and you got a bayonet lug here, which I have no doubt. We'll be able to take a in it if JG has spent that much time and money on realism. So it comes with an orange tip, which is easily removable. By far, this is one of the easiest orange tip removals 
I've had to date, if not the easiest one. So basically, it's going to come on your rifle like this. All you got to do is take a screwdriver, flathead, a uh, flat screwdriver, it'll come right off. There's a little bit of glue, a little bit of residue from the orange. All you got to do is just wipe it off with your fingers, it comes right off. You know, a piece of cake. And just keep that on you, you know, if you got to go to like con events and all that where you require orange tips. Con meaning like conventions and things of that nature. If you're gonna, which is, you know, this is very well suited for that as well, apart from airsoft and reenacting. Um, oh, the rear sight, of course, just like on the real M1, it is adjustable for elevation. As you can see, the rear sight moving up and windage. If you turn this, it moves left to right. Picking this up, you know, it definitely, I, fought, I fired a real M1 last year. And this feels damn near close to that. And so this is going to be my probably my main battle rifle when I go out to do airsoft World War II style. Um, by by a, a long shot, by a miles replaces both my A and K and, G, and ICS, the G and G far in terms of build quality. And I'm sure performance wise is going to surpass both of those. And I can't wait to use this um, out in the field. That's pretty much the review of the G and G M1 Grand, and I don't know what my dog is doing over there. Yeah, she's right there. I don't know what she's doing. Thanks for watching, guys. How do you stop this thing?